spiky bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from spikybits.com. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to magnetize all sorts of different things, but primarily arm joints. But from there, you'll have the keys to the magnetization castle and you can pretty much do anything out there model-wise, I feel like. Here are the, the items I use uh, for magnetizing, and they might be helpful to you. You don't obviously need all of them. The first is just, uh, just a little uh, thumbtack here. And what I do with this is I, I kind of poke the hole exactly where I want to drill. So it basically makes a minute pilot hole. And the reason that's important is I really like this wow stick right here. This wow stick is fun. Um, during prom days, they are 50% off on Amazon. But what's great about it is you, you're not hand cranking everything and you can drill a nice big hole that you can hollow out really quick with your actual pin vise because it doesn't, it doesn't get uh, wider than this. And it's super fun to use. Just listen to it. It's not cheap, but it's one of those things that saves me time and I love it. You can also do the same thing with your normal pin vices, which I'm gonna show you, uh, but it's good to have a smaller one if you're not gonna use the wow stick to drill your pilot hole, and then the bigger one in the, in the width of your magnet, which is gonna be 1 8 by 1 16 inch uh, for this, and I always get my magnets from the Magnet Baron because it helps support somebody in the hobby here, and he has pretty good prices on them, and the standards always stay the same. So you're gonna want those two sizes for most Space Marine or any arm magnetization. They're gonna want some normal uh, super glue sort of thing right here. Um, the, the purple cap stuff from BSI, the pink cap stuff, it's all great. And then you're gonna want some kicker or Instaset, depending on the brand. Uh, this stuff is also great. And the way we apply this, which sometimes it's hard to see, is we're gonna actually take the nozzle out. And then we're gonna kind of squeeze the end and it dribbles a little bit onto the magnet stack themselves. We're not spraying it, it's not going airborne, it's not becoming an aerosol. So, you know, it, it keeps your area nice and fresh unless, well, you get it everywhere out the bottom of the uh, nozzle. So now let's talk about how to actually magnetize stuff. So first step to magnetization is you have to drill a hole for the magnets, right? And uh, so I have this nifty tool, it's called the wow stick. It's a motorized uh, little, um, uh, just a portable drill. Unfortunately, it's it has a small uh, drill bit on it. So first thing you do is just kind of get in there and get you a nice little pinhole to start with. And then you just you just drill and you just go a little ways and then you back off and then you go a little ways more and then you back off. And you just kind of repeat that process till you get to about the depth uh, that you want. Then you grab the appropriate size drill bit um, in a pin vise, in this case, one eighth inch. And you can, <laughs> it takes like two seconds and then you're done. And then just test fit your magnet stack to go in there. Make sure you left a little bit of room uh, for the glue. And uh, yeah, I think it's good. And then all you gotta do is just kind of uh, test fit and finish out the area. Make sure that you have the correct depth and you can back out the magnet stack a little bit. And uh, yeah. And then you're pretty much ready to glue your magnets in there. So most things out there can be magnetized with a little bit of super glue and a zip kicker accelerant. Uh, really all you need is just a stack of magnets, uh, 1 8 by 1 16 And here I'm just putting a little glue in the hole there. Now you can see there, there's blue stuff in that hole and that's just some blue tack I stuffed down in there to create a base. Then I grabbed some of the accelerant um, and kind of squeeze it out, uh, taking the nozzle out of the, the, uh, the bottle there and uh, splash it on the magnets and then just kind of attach them in. And once you get the magnets stack in the hole, it's important to line it up with flush to where the, the magnets will separate flush to the, the surface of what you're magnetizing, in this case, the, the shoulder socket. And then you just kind of uh, let it do its thing and. and uh, harden. You can twist the magnet stack a little bit in your hand until um, the uh, the it spins, and you know that the it has solidified at the bottom. Now grab your second part that already has the uh, the hole drilled. Put a little bit of glue in it. Now you, when you drill your hole, and we'll talk about that in, in a second here. When you drill your hole, you want to leave a little extra space for glue, of course. So you put your glue in there. Again, I, I squeeze the side to uh, let the air out. 
And then I left the magnet stack in the uh, body of that Space Marine and then I flipped it around so I would get the reverse polarization so that way they would all stack together. And here doing the same thing, it's already got some kicker on it. Um, so it will solidify it in, in the hole right there. There's glue all around it and behind it. And, uh, and yeah, and then I just kind of uh, spin the magnets and it looks like it gripped that, that one across the top. So we'll just grab some clippers and kind of separate it right there and we get a nice flush uh, separation right there that will uh, attach flush to the, uh, the arm socket right there. And then you can test it just to make sure. And there it is, just locks into place. So here's the uh, Space Marine captain all assembled up ready to go and like i said uh just remember to put the cape on uh and then your jump pack uh, situation right there and then of course you know you do your uh all, all your magnetization and everything and then once you do that you'll have a stack of weapons right here to kind of future proof uh your man together here now something i didn't mention and something that's uh, i think important to talk about too is these shoulder pads right here you're only going to get one set right but what you want to do is just put a little blue tack on there and blue tack's great because it doesn't show up it doesn't stick to paint um they call it fun tack and all sorts of things in different languages just kind of depends on i already put mine away but it just kind of depends in your area what it uh, it might actually be called and i don't have any handy I don't know where it went. But anyways, poster tack, fun tack, blue tack. Uh, I think the Loctite makes some um, that I use here in the States. You can get it off Amazon. But what's cool about this is once you figure out like kind of what configuration you want, like say you want the, the sword, boom, you got your sword on there. And then you're like, okay, well, just give me this auto boat, bolt pistol right there. And something else I, I didn't uh, I didn't mention too is on all of the new stuff, including the Terminators, they have these little studs on the shoulder. In order to kind of make these guys, uh, I guess when you put the shoulder pad on there, appear more jacked or maybe a sizable difference or something, or maybe just to make them stand out from the Assault Intercessors and then the Terminators from obviously the old Terminators or even just the Terminators that, uh, that perhaps came in... Um, uh, the Leviathan box. I don't know exactly, but either way, it makes actually gluing stuff onto them a little bit difficult. But what it doesn't make difficult is if you have a little bit of blue tack in your uh, in your shoulder pads here, and then you just lock it in like that, and then you can even position it depending on the the piece right there to make it look even better, which is really cool. And once you put it in there, just take a little bit of your, your cap for your glue and just kind of mash it down and get it to work uh, the angles and the curvature in there. And then you can just kind of boom, get it on there. And then you've got your model all future-proofed and you can do them up however you want and things like that. And just keep track of uh, the rest of your weapons there and you can swap them out whenever you need. And I, I really like this guy. I think the composition of the models uh, pretty, pretty sweet. Now, obviously, you could do that with other uh, captains and things out there, but it's just kind of something to think about. And then we've got our basic uh, Duder man right here, uh, where, where you know he's uh, kind of skipping across the the old tactical rock, I suppose. Um, just something to kind of keep in mind. Like it looks great. The composition is good. This is how it compares to you know big big man right here. They are about the same size, miniature give or take, because they are kind of the new sculpts. Now what I didn't grab was I didn't grab one of the my old uh, painted intercessor just to give you, give you an idea of how they compare to the current stuff right there. Which yeah, there you go. But what I really wanted to show you was an Assault Intercessor, which I purposely grabbed one that was a very similar pose leg style wise, uh, which you can see right there. It's basically, depending on how you, which you, you don't have a, these torsos are set, these aren't, right? You can twist them. Um, it's very similar leg posing right there. And I was like, okay, well, let's see what it would look like. And then with some 3D printed bits, now this is opaque. Once you prime it, it gets nice and crisp. And this is uh, the, some of the some of the bits we actually sell on our site. But you can find other ones on Etsy and things, depending on what you're looking for, of course. Um, but once you start looking at this, these guys are about the same size. The only thing that is different is that this guy's kind of skipping across the rock there. So if you find a way to kind of elevate this dude, um, you could, in theory, 
you know, put them, put them on your own little shale rocks, or you could get some dope bases from Elvix or something like that, and kind of elevate them up a little bit, and then you would also have that kind of look. And you can put the little thruster uh, vent things down if you want, or you can just not include them all together if you don't like them all flared out like the F14 afterburners right there. But I just thought it was something kind of cool to to uh, to to show that you can do that sort of thing. So I think you know there is some good suitable alternatives out. Out there for stuff you might already have with some new stuff you can buy and not have to pick these up but whatever you decide they're both gonna look good and they both work for me if you play me on the tabletop I got no problem with either one of these guys right here um, and I definitely think if I had to recommend any of the products that we just talked about I would definitely go with this guy because he is just super dope looking and there really isn't you know much uh, much oh, I just knocked that off there really isn't much else out there that has this sort of similar posing like superman style just kind of flying through the sky and now that we have a, a space marine arm joint from there it's really just a, a varying amount of degrees up and down a slide <laughs> so to speak from doing knights which are actually shockingly easy you literally take the same thing we just talked about and you just up the scale like right here we've got a, a 5 16 of an inch magnet and in the 5 16 7 inch hole right here, which is literally the same thing as doing the arm joints or the shoulder joints that I just showed you. Um, and then you've even got, depending on what the thing is, like maybe it's a tank turret, maybe you wanna use a quarter inch magnet. Well, there's ways to do that too, or the knights, you know? Um, and then you can slide back down to things like weapon swaps. Just, you know, if the, if the weapon goes onto the hand, but a lot of hands are attached these days, that's where the stuff like the wow stick's really gonna come into play because the wow stick is great once you get down to these smaller sizes right here, but this isn't going to be for everything. A lot of times you're gonna be using these as the pilot holes to kind of dig things out. And then when you use things like the Knights, you're gonna to wanna to invest in a, in a nice driver here because you know we're talking something that's uh, 5 16 7 inch right here. So we are using this thing to kind of bore out those areas right there. So it's all just sliding up and down from there, but now you have the literal keys to pretty much magnetize anything you want out there um, in you know the the tabletop wargaming uh, realm from small weapon slops using uh, you would use probably a sixteenth by one sixteenth inch magnet to the shoulder joints which are the, the one eighth by one sixteenth here um, to even stuff like you know uh, quarter inch to three three. Uh, 30 second inch just it really depends on what you need but there's a magnet out there in a size that will probably work and as long as you have stuff like this uh, a normal pin vise this guy right here um, you're gonna be able to do it in a little bit of blue tack or poster tack to kind of build those recessed cavities up like we showed you so uh, that's pretty much it go you know leave some comments you know let us know what you've been able to magnetize or what you would like to magnetize and how we go about it you know because sometimes you want to use those little flat pieces of, of uh, steel of, of ferrous metal because you can't you don't have room for a magnet and we've shown you some of that on like the Rogel Dorn tank and things so you can look those videos up here on the channel and kind of check those out too because where there's a will there, there's a way and you always want to in my mind at least and I always try to is always future proof my stuff and i always find myself going back and having to do more work especially now currently in 10th edition to some stuff i took some shortcuts on and if i had just followed my own advice i'd probably be playing more games of 40k right now unfortunately so that's it for this one thank you very much for watching our little tutorial kind of cobbled together over a couple of different tutorials <laughs> believe it or not on how to magnetize your minis and future proof them for more editions of the game. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our future videos. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just It's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikybits.